Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. I hope that you have an awesome week. I mean, it's Thursday. We've made it so far. Um, before we carry on with the universal law of gravity and maybe start on the atomic model, I would like to just confirm, explain to you guys how to enroll in the grade 11 science class. Um, I know I tell you this every time, but I'm also very well aware that I have on my own students who will say that they want to join different classes and everything online and then a week before prelims will go oh my gosh ma'am how do you do it I don't remember how to do it and I haven't done it and I desperately need those resources so let me show you now again how to do it okay so what you need to do is find your um, browser whether it be your Google Chrome or your um, what do you got edge or your firefox whatever you prefer and what you need to do is type in www.toenable.org okay and you'll come across this page what you need to do then is you need to register okay so when you register you have to type in your first name your last name and your email address and click register and then just go through the process then what you have to do it's no use just registering guys you actually have to log in so you have to go back in and log in and to put in your email address and your password click the remember me because that means that you won't have to click the password every time and it'll actually if I, nowadays if I just put in my first initial it will put in my email address and my password and life is cool and then you click login and you'll come across a screen that looks more or less like this. If it's the first time you're here, then your screen won't be this populated, it won't have this much stuff in it. It'll have choose subject, progress and results and to enable help online. You need to click the big red button and choose a subject. So what you do is you scroll down all the subjects and you find grade 11 physical science and you click it and you say enroll and you click it and it'll kick you back to the screen and you will now have a blue button which says physical science grade 11. So now you've got that, okay? Now, there are a couple of things that you can look for. First of all, if there is a live assessment happening in the subject that you've chosen, so for example, grade 11 science, there would be a red number here with the number one or two, however many live assessments there are running. And what it is, is then you can go click on that and then you could do the live assessment. And the live assessment is basically just a multiple choice quiz or questionnaire that I have set up that will be about the subject matter that we're doing. So the reason for that is that I would then get an idea of what you guys are struggling on and then I could aim my lessons towards that. So that's the idea. Okay, so then in order to watch a live session, you need to click on the upcoming events. So you click on the upcoming events and you come to screen like this, scroll down to the right date because there might be more than the one day. So for example, at the moment I've got two or three days listed in the upcoming events. So if you're in enrolled for example in grade 12 maths you'd have at least two days okay and then what you need to do is you need to click on the right date and then we well, don't have to click at all you need to go to the view event and click there so you click on the view event button and you'll get this pop up the okay just says yes okay i've seen this what you actually need to do is click on the blue thing that says open live tv link click on that and you get to a screen that's got this in now if you look carefully you'll see on the screen if you're looking for the grade 11 stuff it'll say grade 11 physical science and the start time and the end time and then it says open feed in new tab I would click to do that because it makes the screen bigger but that's just me and then you can press the big green button don't worry about this this is for me you press the big green button join the event now listen there are two options here if you're watching this live then great then press the green button life is cool if I ever you are say for example you've got sport or you can't get home in time or you've got something else on then you can always watch your recording or if you've watching this live and realize that actually you don't know a lot about universal law of gravitation and you want to go back and watch yesterday's version or actually the day before's version then you can go and find that recording and click on it okay so you can watch these as recordings as well 
but now yes upshot if you watch it live then you can message me and that's another reason i want you guys to join the class enroll in the class you can message me and go awesome i'm so glad you're doing universal law of gravitation i've got a problem with that question with a satellite sitting between the two planets and i'll go okay let's do a question like that or you could say i'm really struggling with this section in chemistry and then i will after i'm finished the section i'm currently doing i would then aim to do the questions i mean go through the section you're struggling with um because that's the whole idea the whole idea is it's supposed to be a feedback loop okay however if you're watching a recording this message studio button doesn't work because obviously i might not be there you might be watching a recording at 1 a.m in the morning in which case i will definitely not be in the studio okay so there you go right let's now carry on with the universal law of application and if you were with me on Tuesday, we were doing this question. Yeah, we basically had finished this question. And then I just said you needed to do the last bit. Okay. It says, okay, we, we'd finished the first bit, which said the Earth exerts a force of 5,000 newtons on the satellite to keep it in orbit. Calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Okay, so we'd worked this all out and we said that, okay, fine, it was 714,18 kilometers, right? So therefore, this X was 714,18 kilometers. And then I said, as a challenge, if you've got time and you've got the inclination, you should go and try this question here and see how you do. And this one says another satellite of mass, double that of satellite A, orbits at a distance twice that of satellite A. So in other words, you've got some other random satellite, which we're going to call B, which is twice the mass of A, so it's twice the mass of A, and it is double the distance. This is 2x, okay? It says write down the magnitude of the force of attraction. So they really aren't expecting you to do this whole, this whole thing here. They're not expecting you to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our ratios. Okay, we know the force was 5,000 newtons when we had G, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the satellite over the R squared, okay? And we knew that that was 5,000. And remember we worked out that, what did we work out? We worked out that the radius, we were given the radius of the Earth was 6.3 times 10 to the 6, and we worked out the satellite distance okay so now do you agree what do we have we now have an f nu which is made up of and let's just change okay i'm going to write it down yes this space and i'm going to change color so i'm going to go f nu is equal to right mm, okay wait first the original color g mass of the earth and then it is the mass of satellite, and we're going to call the satellite satellite B. Mass of satellite B over the distance from the Earth of satellite B, okay, squared. Okay, so do you agree that the mass of satellite B is twice the mass of satellite A, right? So therefore, I could actually rewrite this to be G M E. And then I could say, well, this is actually twice the mass of satellite A, satellite A, all over. Now, the radius is interesting because do you remember I was the radius of the Earth plus X? Now, it's the radius of Earth plus two times X, okay, two times X, okay? So, if we have to look at this, do you see that this was, the radius of the Earth was 6.3 times 10 to the 6 um, meters, and if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, do you see that 7 times by 10 to the 6? So, the rate X was 7 times by 10 to the 6, more or less. This is 6.3 times 10 to the is 6. Do you see that the third one, if, I, if I'm not 2x above, it is now going to be 2x is going to be 14 times by 10 to the 6, or 1,4 times 10 to the 7. But do you see it's actually three times the, the original radius? It's actually equal to 
three times approximately equal to approximately equal to three times the original radius of, of the earth okay because this is 6.3 this is seven and then be another seven because all they're doing is asking you to write down the magnitude so they're kind of saying kind of give us a guesstimate okay so do you agree that this now is going to be 3r sorry let me correct that r all squared so do you agree and now i'm running out of space so i'm going to write it all of this over here so i'm going to say okay therefore my new force f new is equal to the two over what's three squared nine of the original force all of this this bit here is the original force which is five thousand because they they told us the original force is five thousand so therefore it is just going to be ten thousand over nine which is well we can work it out that it goes one one, one, one comma one newtons. Okay, so there you go. Now you know what the force is. Okay, so it just said write down the magnitude of the force of attraction. They kind of want you to go with ratios. Okay, moving on. Now it says, new question, and these questions have all been taken out of old exam paper questions. They're all old exam paper questions, and I've included them because I feel that you guys need to practice, and I find that this is actually quite an easy section for marks, but a lot of the students don't actually practice enough, and therefore they get it wrong. Okay, it says, if the gravitational force between objects of equal mass is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons and the objects are 10 meters apart what is the mass of each object okay so our formula is g is equal to this every time f is equal to big g m1 m2 over r squared okay the big g remember is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 and remember i said to you you guys need to use whatever's on your formula sheet okay whatever's on your formula sheet the r is 10 the force is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 and they want the mass of each object but they're the same so do you agree that m1 is going to equal m2 which can just say is m Okay, so therefore we can say that F is equal to G 6.6. .6, okay, no, hang on. Let me just rewrite this. There it is. And in fact, I'm going to do it down here because there's more space. I'm going to go. F is the force. So it's 2 comma 3 times by 10 to the minus 8 is equal to big G 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass squared because it's mass times mass all over the radius which is 10 and then we're going to square it so now do you agree that we can say then is 2 comma 3 times by 10 to the negative 8 times by 10 squared because we're multiplying and then divide by 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11 is equal to the square of the masses. So let's pop that into our calculator and clear it. So we've got 2.3 exponent negative 8 times 100. I already don't need to write 10 squared. Divided by 6.7 exponent negative 11 equals and we get this but that is equal to the square of the masses mass times mass so we're going to square root the answer and we get 185.279 remember we always round up to two decimal places so it's 185.28 so that's 185 comma 28 kilograms so there you go, that is the mass of each of the objects. So it wasn't a tricky question really, you just had to realize that you could let the two masses be equal to each other and then solve for the masses. Okay, let's try another one. Now it says three objects, A, B, and C. So you've got A, 
B and C. They are placed 50 centimeters apart along a straight line. So this is 50 centimeters and this is 50 centimeters. Okay. A and B have a mass of 10 kilograms each. That's 10 and 10. And C has a mass of 15. And it says, what is the net force on B due to A and C? Okay, so first of all, what's wrong with these measurements? These are centimeters and they need to be in meters. So how do we get from centimeters to meters? We divide by 100. So if we divide it by 100, it becomes 0, 0,5 meters and 0, 0,5 meters. Now, in order to find the net force, do you remember that the net force, F net, is always the sum of all the forces. Okay, it's always the sum of all the forces. And do you agree there'll be a force of attraction between A and B? And there'll be a force of attraction between B and C, right? So what we need to do is we need to work out the force of attraction B has towards A, and then work out the force of attraction that B has towards C, and then add those forces. And I say add because remember, these are vectors, so we're going to give direction. So I'm going to choose to the right as positive. Okay, to the right as positive. So let's work out the force of AB first. Force AB. Okay, so let's first work out what we've got. We've got the mass of A is 10. The mass of B is 10. The displacement is 0, 0,5. And big G we know. Okay, so we can say it's equal to 6.7 times 10 to minus 11. The mass of A is 10. The mass of B is 10. All over the displacement, which is 0, 0,5 all squared. Okay, so let's pop that in our calculators. So we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11, 11 times 100. Why do I say that? Well, 10 times 10 is obviously 100. Equals divided by 0 0.5 squared equals. Okay, so that becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and remember we can actually do this. I'm going to show you. Shift. Oh, dear. Sorry. Has the shift button working? No. Shift degree. No, cancel. Hmm, what happened? Shift degree. Huh. Okay, that didn't work. So let's go back up. Let's cancel. And now I need to do it again. Darn. 6.7 exponent. Sorry, I was thinking about why it didn't work. Um, okay, times by a hundred, hundred equals divided by 0 0.5 squared equals, and we get this. So if you guys get an answer like this, you can actually make things different with your mode. So if you go to your mode, um, no, it's not mode. I wonder if it's set up. Let's go back to shift mode. Um, hang on, I've got to clear it. Darn it. Shift mode. There we go. So now you can see that you can fix, you can change what you want, as in within one, two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places. So I'm going to choose seven, and then I'm going to choose two. And there you go. My answer is now 2.7 times by 10 to the negative eight. But in fact, I actually want three because then it'll give me my second decimal above, okay? Because two means two significant figures. So we're going to go shift, set up, science, and we're going to go three. There you go. So it becomes 2.68 times by 10 to the negative eight. 2.68 times 10 to the negative eight. So the force, 2,68 times 10 to the negative eight. And that is the force that B feels towards A. So that is the force that B is feeling as a force of attraction towards A, right? So that is to the left. Okay force of A on B. Now, let's work out the force of C on B. 
Okay, so again, we've got G, it is going to be, okay, let me just write this out, F is equal to big G, M1, M2 over R squared. The big G is 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and then what do we know? M1 in this case is going to be 10, M2 is 15, and R is again 0,5. So therefore it's 10 times 15 all over 0,5 squared. So now we need to pop that into our calculators. Okay, so we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11 times by 150 divided by 0 0.5 squared equals, and that is 4.02 times, times by 10 to negative 8. 4. 0.02 times 10 to the negative 8 to the right. And I would have expected this to be bigger for the simple reason that this has got a bigger mass. If you look at these two numbers, you can see that this is obviously bigger than that and the rest of the numbers are the same. So therefore, the net force, F net, is the sum of all the forces and we've chosen right as positive. So it's going to be 4,02 times by 10 to the negative 8 plus the force to the left, which is minus 2,68 times by 10 to the negative 8. So then we pop that in our calculators. So we've got 4.02 times by 10 to the negative 8. A plus times a minus becomes a minus. So you go minus 2.68 exponent negative 8 equals and it becomes 1.34 times by 10 to the negative 8. 1.34 times by 10 to the negative 8. 1,34 times by 10 to the negative 8. What? Newtons in which direction? To the right. Remember that's a force. So you always, always, always have to give direction. Okay, right. Let's do another question. Right, this is a question that a lot of students struggle with, which is why I've included it, okay? We have the Earth and we've got the Moon, okay? And it says that there's a spaceship, okay? Oh, I really suck at drawing. So let's make it look like a little bit like a bullet and then put wings on it and then give it some gas. Okay, and it's halfway, it's exactly halfway between the Earth and the Moon. Exactly halfway between the Earth and the Moon. It says, find the net gravitational force of attraction exerted on the ship by the Earth and the Moon. Okay, so... Okay, this question isn't actually as difficult as I thought. Okay, so do you agree that this is exactly halfway? Right, we have the Earth Moon distance. It's the total total distance is 3.84 times by 10 to the 8. So therefore, we can work out the half. We've got the Moon mass. We've got its mass and we've got its radius. We have the mass of the Earth and the mass of the radius. Mass of the radius. <laughs> sorry, and we got the radius of the Earth. And we have the mass of the spaceship. Okay, so do you agree we're going to do exactly the same type of thing? We're going to work out the force that the Earth applies on the, the spaceship, and then we're going to work out the force of the Moon on the spaceship, and then we're going to work out the net force, okay? So let's do that right now. Sorry, I'm just busy correcting that. That's going to be that way. So the first one we're going to work out is the force of the Earth on the spaceship. Then there's the force of the Moon on the spaceship. And again, we need to work out, uh, choose a direction as positive or negative. So I'm just going to choose right as positive. Okay, so let us do that now. Um, I'm going to do a similar question to this afterwards because, anyway, never mind. Okay, so we're looking at that. So if we're looking at the force of the Earth in the spaceship, what do we need? We have the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times by 10 to the 24. We have the Earth 
radius is 6.38 times by 10 to the 6. We have the earth moon distance is going to be 3.84. So this is going to be divided by 2. So the, the distance is going to be a half times 3.84 times by 10 to the 8. Okay, we'll work that out in a minute. And we have the mass of the spaceship, which is 31,500 kgs. And we want to know the force. Okay. Right. So let's do that. So we need to work first out the half of the 3.84. So we're going to go 0 0.5 times 3.84 exponent 8 equals 1.92 times 10 to the 8. That is equal to 1.92 times by 10 to the 8. Now we're going to go, okay, well, F is equal to G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, over the distance between their centers squared. And notice that they don't give us the radius or the distance within the spaceship because that's so small compared to the radius of the Earth that it really is not applicable. So we've got 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth, Earth mass, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. The mass of the spaceship, which is 31,500, all over the distance between their center squared. So what do we need to do? We add, need to take that distance and add Earth's radius to it because we're going from here all the way to there. Okay, so that becomes 6.38 times by 10 to the 6 plus 1.92 times by 10 to the 8. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So let us just for fun use the fraction button. So we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 5.98 exponent 24 multiplied by 31,500 all divided by bracket 6.38 exponents no sorry times by 10 to the power of 6 plus 1.92 times 10 to the 8 and i just realized i made a mistake over there so let me just quickly go back to I'm going to delete, 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 delete. Exponent um, 10 to the 6. Okay, now I'm happy. I know theoretically it means the same thing, but I find that sometimes calculators, oh, I knew it. Okay, so it's 6. Okay, fine. Okay, so it's 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 5.98 exponent 24 multiplied by 31,500 all divided by 6.38 exponent 6 Plus, oh, and look what I'm forgetting to do. Oh, grade 11s, I almost totally messed up. I forgot to, almost forgot to square that, hey? Remember I kept saying to you last time, you must remember to square, you must remember to square. And then look what I did, I almost forgot to square. How embarrassing, how ridiculous. Okay, so please make sure you don't do that, okay? So it becomes 1.92 exponent 8. Mm-mm. That's not going to work. Exponent 8. Close the bracket. Square it. Move over. And equals. There we go. So it's 3.21 times 10 to the 2. So that is equal to 3.21 times by 10 to the 2. And that is towards the Earth. So it's going to be left. 
Okay, that is what the spacecraft is experiencing due to the Earth. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're doing it with respect to the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two minutes to try it for yourselves, and then we're going to carry on. Okay, and I want you to at least have written down the the constants that you have. In other words, the mass of the moon, the radius of the moon, the distance, and mass of the da da da, and fold it into the equation by the time I come back to you. Try it. You've got two minutes. Right, great Evans, how far are you? Um, I'm expecting you to have got the answer already, but <laughs> that might be a bit much because it is quite a big sum. So let's have a look. We've got the force of the moon on the satellite. So the moon on the satellite, you've got the mass of the moon, you've got the radius of the moon, you've got the satellite's mass. So we're just going to go for it, but remember we need to add the distance is again going to be the radius of the moon plus this distance here because it's again halfway, right? So it's this distance all the way through to the halfway through the moon because it's from the center to the center. Right, if we do that, um, I'm going to fill it in over here, it becomes G, which is 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11 times by the mass of the moon, which is 7.36 times by 10 to the 22 times by 31,500, all divided by, all divided by, the sum of the distances. So remember, it is the half of the earth moon distance which is 1,92 times 10 to the 8 plus the moon radius of 1.74 times 10 to the 6 all squared. Okay so you can see that this sum isn't actually that difficult as long as you keep your wits about you and realize that you need to actually halve the distance between the earth and moon for each of these questions and then you've also obviously got to realize that you're um, adding the radii of either the earth and moon and then you're going to add the two forces. Okay so let's get out our calculators and try this now. So let's clear and we're going to go 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 7 point and I'm embarrassing I can't read my handwriting I think it's 3 6 here we go let's we'll put it here 3 6 exponent 22 multiplied by 31,500 
all divided by open bracket 1.92 exponent 8 plus 1.74 exponent 6 close bracket square it and that becomes 4.14 Okay, 4.14. So that is 4,14. Okay, and by the way, these are Newtons. Eh? You do know these are Newtons. And this is going to be to the right. So now it says, what is the net gravitational force? Well, remember, it's the sum of both the forces. So F net is going to be the sum of the force. And remember, we said that this direction was positive. So it's going to be 4.14 plus minus 3.21 times 10 to the 2. So now all we have to do is put that in our calculators again. So we've got 4.14 minus 3.21 exponent 2, which I'm really hoping you know is 321 anyway. And that becomes minus 317. So it's minus 317 newtons. But remember, what does this minus mean? The minus means towards the Earth. So therefore, the net force is 317 newtons to the left, to the left. Okay, right, grade um, 12s, grade 11s. That's a very nice question. There's another version of this question, which I'm actually going to modify on this question and then show you how to do it because I've seen it in one or two exam papers and it's pretty mean. So let's go through to make sure you guys can do it. Okay, so let me just erase all this. Okay, if you guys are freaking because I raised so quickly, remember you can go watch the recording of this lesson, okay? You don't have to freak and you can, what the nice thing about recording again, like I said, is you can fast forward to the section that you want to go through. Okay, so let's say for example that instead of saying it's halfway, we're going to say the net gravitational force is zero. Is zero. The net gravitational force of attraction exerted by the Earth and the Moon is zero. So there's a zero net force. And we want to know what, how far is the spaceship from Earth? And we're also going to make things a little bit easier. We're going to, just for this example, we're going to... No, let's leave the Earth. Okay, let's leave everything else. So this is the Earth. And this is the Moon. And what we're saying is that there's a point along here where the net force that the spaceship experiences, okay, the net force that the spaceship experiences is zero. F net is zero. And I'm drawing this incorrectly because there really should be no gases on you. So it's just drifting in space. Okay, it's drifting in space. There's no gases. Right, so now we want to know, okay, how far the spaceship is from Earth, okay? We know that this distance here we've been given. The Earth's radius is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So that there is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. We want to know how far it is away from the Earth. So we want to know this distance here, x. Okay. This distance here is, what is it? 1.74 times by 10 to the 6. That's 1.74 times by 10 to the 6. And it tells us that the Earth-Moon distance, this whole distance here, from there to there, is 3.84 times by 10 to the 8. So do you agree that this distance here is going to be 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x? If this bit is x, then this bit here is going to be 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x. Okay, do you understand? And now we're going to work it out again. We're going to go look at this side here. And we're going to work out the force of the Earth on the satellite. Then we're going to work out on this side the force of the moon on the satellite. Now remember they're equal because the net force is zero. And then we're going to solve for x. 
Okay, so let's do that. So let's start with the red. We know that F is G mass 1 mass 2 over R squared. So if we're looking for the left hand side, okay, we have the mass of the Earth. We've got the radius of the Earth that we need to add to X. We have got the moon's radius. No, we don't need that. And we've got the mass of the spaceship. So we're saying F is G, which is 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11. Okay, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to make things a little bit easier for you guys. I'm actually going to do this. Let's leave G as big G. Then we've got the mass of the Earth in this case, which is 5.98 times by 10 to the 24. Then we've got the mass of the spaceship. I'm going to call it the mass of the spaceship. All over with this, the Earth's radius, which is 6.38 times by 10 to the 6 plus x, all squared. Okay. This force here, that force there, do you agree that that force, let's make it the other color, shall we? Is equal to big G, the mass of the moon, which is 7.36 times by 10 to the 22, times by the mass of the spaceship, all over, now this bit here is going to be interesting because it's going to be 1.74 times by 10 to the 6 plus 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x all squared. And do you agree that these forces, the sum of them equals 0? The sum of them equals 0. Okay. We've, therefore, we can say that f F plus F is going to equal zero. Okay, and I see that it's now time. So what I'd like to suggest you do is, you guys, as guys, again, I'd like to challenge you to try this question. This is the last question we're going to be doing on universal law of gravitation. Next lesson, we're going to move on to atomic model and bonding and bonding energies and covalent bonding and Lewis starts and you know it. So this is the last question we have on universal law of gravitation. So please just try this question for yourselves. Okay, it's a very nice question, and I will finish it for you guys in the next lesson which is on Tuesday. Have a great day.